welcome to Church on the Park. My name is Robert Avey. I'm a member of the session. Uh, it's time to stand up and greet your neighbor. Good, 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 good morning. As the faithful slowly trickle in. I was just about to say, mark the calls back, so that's good. Whoa, good morning to everybody on the stream. I uh, messed up this morning and... No one's listening to me. I got, no one ever listens to me. If Linda said something, you'd listen. I messed up on the stream. We have two different uh, accounts, and we had the other one open to work on the website, and I needed this one open. So if you had trouble with the stream this morning, that's why, and I apologize. Yeah, get the hugs in, get the hugs in. While we're all at it, this is the last day of church school, uh, so let's give a big hand to Andrea for the great year that she's done. Yay, Andrea! <laughs> Emily Bolton made the president's list at SUNY Potsdam. Yay! <laughs> Which apparently is higher than the dean's list, right? So that's great. And worked a job at the grocery store. Good for you. Keep it up. And just by word of uh, fair warning, uh, Kate and Emily turned 16. They got their driver's permits, and they're now on the road. So. Today is uh, Father's Day, so happy Father's Day to all you dads there. Yeah, all you dads on the stream. And we have a brunch, so I know uh, we couldn't find hams at this time of year, so we did, we did uh, so Italian sausage, onions, and peppers, and uh, next time we'll, we'll buy hams and put them in the freezer for Father's Day, but they're tough to come by this time of year. Also, um, the big news today is that it is, we have several birthdays. 
Rich Grayson is turning 86 today, and we have, a, we have a cake for him, and so he got to pick his own cake, and it's carrot cake with cream cheese frosting. Uh, Vern would have gotten his name on the cake, but he is away for the weekend, but it's his birthday as well, and Karen Parker uh, is having a birthday, and so I think we should have Rich come up. I, I insisted on bringing the cake in here, because by the time you get up there, Rich, come on up here. We're gonna sing happy birthday. Let get up here, hold the note. Uh, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Turn around. Happy birthday, dear Richard. Happy birthday to you. You gonna blow them out? Are you oh, want me to do it for you? You want help? <laughs> oh! <laughs> we love a good time here on the park. So it's great to see everyone here. Uh, we have some new people here, but we won't introduce them as Mike and Diane because we don't want to embarrass them. But I don't think there's any embarrassing Diane, certainly. Uh, friends of Di uh, Linda, they met a long time ago and we've uh, had this nice relationship so because our service is still at 10 o'clock they drove all the way from the river or wherever the heck you live over here so they're, they're gonna join us for uh, for the brunch and you did bring a dish to pass right? That's right absolutely she's a quick study so are there any other announcements? Yes come forward Good morning, everyone. I'm Michelle Tyson. Um, as you know, JJ Chockel and Sean Booten and myself are representatives from our church with the Church of Community Program. And I know there's a, uh, the school year's not over yet for many of the children, but the Church of Community Program is thinking of next school year already. So remember the Ticonderoga pencils that we did last year? We did such a good job that they have so many left over for this year. But we have a new assignment. <laughs> We're going to be donating one subject spiral notebooks, college rule paper. Gordy found this one at Walmart for 45 cents. That's not a bad deal. And it's not even back to school sales. And you can find them at, uh, they have different brands at different stores, but they have them at all the local stores, Price Chopper, Walmart, Kinney's, and Dollar Tree. So uh, please, you know, whenever you see one, pick one up. We don't, we don't have one because she knows that we're just going to be giving, giving, giving. She said, do what the Lord blesses you to do, and we'll pick up the slack if, if we need to. I think, so. I think we need a number. Not, not so much that we're not going to reach it, but yeah. once we get there, you know. Well, I think our, our target last year was under 1,000. We did over 1,000. We did about... 14, pencils. Yeah, yeah. pencils. Right. Work so, out. But she went, I asked her directly, and she said, you don't have a goal. Yes. Now. It starts anytime, and you, the last Sunday to donate is August 4th. Sunday. So you have August. all summer. Yeah. It'll be in the newsletter. Thank you. I was having trouble with my email. I didn't think I got it. Yeah. And so there's a box in the foyer with a sign. Just drop off your notebooks out there, and I'll be taking them to the Church and Community Program on Monday, August 5th. All right. So thank you very much, and I know you're such a generous congregation. Thank you. JJ has an announcement back there. Oh. Thanks. I wanted to say something about the Church and Community Program, too. Speaking of, of birthdays, uh, this year marks the 50th anniversary of the, of the Church and Community Program. And uh, we're planning a big batch. Uh, uh, in September, inviting all the congregations and all the people in, in Canton on a Sunday to come to come. There will be kitty rides and all kinds of other stuff. It won't surprise you that the key person on the events committee is is uh, is Michelle, uh, the chairman of the committee. Again, she has she has really good ideas. Um, that's coming in the fall, uh, but it's not too early to mark the fact that uh, this is the 50th anniversary. It's a tremendous achievement for our church. And churches of, of Canton and we, we've been supporting people who needed our help for 50 years collectively with uh, learned a new, new um, 
expression from Father Stead of the Catholic Church recently. He said, we bring together people of faith and people of service. We've been, we've been doing it for 50 years. You have been doing it for 50 years. That's great. Thank you very much, JJ. I heard a rumor that someone was trying to get a dunk tank for that day and, ha and, ha and have the ministers in it. And all I want to tell you is I'm game. I'm game. Dunk away. I was making that up. You really are going to have a dunk tank? Sean had the idea for the dunk tank, knowing that I would do it. Yes, on both counts. Let's join together and worship the Lord. Oh, it's noisy can. Let's noisy can it. So this goes, this money is money the kids raise for food for the church and community program. Go on, go do it. I'm thinking we need like the Pink Panther theme or something. No? Da -da 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 -da. Make some noise. Make some noise now. Big hand for the kids. Yay, Rosie. If you want to have a particularly fine experience, go, go talk to Rosie and get her to smile for you, because that's a, that's a good day right there. Since we are the church reformed, always reforming, I will point out to you that Martha Cole was early today. And then are we ready? Let's join together and worship the Lord. Please stand and join with me in the call to worship in the bulletin. The kingdom of God is like seeds scattered on the ground. The earth produces of itself. With what shall we compare the kingdom of God? Let us pray. Almighty God, we give you thanks for this glorious day, for these good people. We are mindful of all the dads in our lives, uh, those that live in our hearts, those that have been fatherly figures to us in our lives, in our church. We ask that you impart your spirit to dwell upon us, that we may find the comfort and the solace and the hope and the encouragement that we seek this day. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 370 is our first hymn. This is My Father's World. Are you accolading today? Are you be a liturgist? This is my father's world, and to avoid listening is all day. This is my father's world. I rest me in the thought of rocks and trees, of skies and seas, his hand of wonders brought. This is my father's world. Oh, let me never forget that though the rock seems off so strong, is the ruler yet? This is my father's world. The battle is not done. Jesus, who 
died shall be satisfied, and earth and heaven be one. Please join young Sebastian in the bulletin in the unison prayer of confession as we do the hard work of the faith. Let us pray. Forgive us, O oh God, for dismissing the smallness of our faith. Slow, slow down. We're all doing it together. Let us pray. Forgive us, God, for dismissing the smallness of our faith, for focusing more on how we began than on how, how we, how we might, might end, end. for seeing only the slight seed not, and not, not the beauty of the flower, the goodness, the goodness of the fruit, or, the or all that you would have us be. Help us to abide the mystery of how we sprout and grow in the name of the sower and in the promise of what is sown. Amen. Hear the good news. God sent Christ into our world not to condemn us, but to save us. I say to us in the name of Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. Amen. Let's affirm our faith, reading aloud the Apostles' Creed, which is the inside cover of any hymnal, the purple or the green. I believe in God the Father oh, Almighty, maker, maker of, of heaven and, and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried, he descended into heaven. In the third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. forgiven us in Christ, let us be forgiving of ourselves and each other. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And also with you. Please be seated. He's getting to know it now, right? It's a volunteer position, just so you know. Today's scripture reading is from Mark's Gospel, it's chapter 4, 26 through 34, hear the word of the Lord. Jesus also said, the kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow, but she does not know how. The earth produces of itself, first the stalk, then the head then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once she goes in with her sickle because the harvest has come. Jesus also said, with what can we compare the kingdom of God or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which when sown upon the ground is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables, Jesus spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. Here ends the reading of the word. I'd like to have the kids come forward. We're going to do a little... Uh, we're going to do a little advice and survey today. You coming up? Morning, Lachlan. You look very nice. I can't wait till you're 
a little older and I can tell you about all the clothes that your parents used to dress you up in. <laughs> you were the only guy in church with a bow tie. So it's Father's Day today, right? So we could talk about a lot of things, but what I want to talk about, because I'm doing it, is the best Father's Day gift ever. The best Father's Day gift ever. Because you know every year it comes around and like, what are we going to get dad for Father's Day? Uh, any of you dads out there, do you have any kind of memorable Father's Day gifts that, that you remember getting at some point other than a tie? <laughs> Anyone? Anyone? Really? See, this is a well tie. You're not a father. You don't get to say it. <laughs> any dads that can rem See, this is why we're having this children's sermon today. Because you need to know what the very best Father's Day gift to give is. Do you have any, any guesses what it might be? What's the, what, what do you think your dad would like the most? A girl? A girl? No, I think he's got a girl. Oh, a grill. <laughs> Art link letter. If he doesn't already have a grill, he absolutely needs to have a grill. So the, I, I, would think, I would think that needs to go to the top of the list. And I would vote for a three burner, not a two. Any other wonderful gifts you think? What do you think a good gift for dad is? See, this is why we need this. Go ahead. You have another idea? Oh, you're just, you're just, no. That, I mean, yes, that may be. But I want to tell you the best gift that dad wants is pretty simple and it doesn't cost a lot you know what dads want for Father's Day they want their kids to talk to them just talk to them just have conversations just tell dad what you do am I right dads right I mean you don't need another thing well there may be a tool that you want but that would be on the list but other than that just talk to your dad just see what's going on just Tell them how you're doing. You know, we kind of think dads, like, they don't need to know anything. They just kind of sit there and do their thing, blah, blah, blah. Dads love to know what their kids are doing. And you know what? God's the same way. God really wants us to talk to him about what's going on in our lives. We call that prayer, but it doesn't have to be just prayer. Sometimes I'm just talking to God all the time. Sometimes I'm complaining to God. Sometimes I'm being thankful to God. Sometimes I'm asking for things. Sometimes I'm saying, okay, God, what's the deal here? So we just need to talk to both our Father on earth and Father in heaven. And I know for some people, Father's Day is hard because they have lost their dad. And so I still think, between the two kinds of talking to dads, I, feel, I still think it's important that you say some words to your dad, wherever he or she may be, and just remember them and how special uh, they are to you or were to you. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for these kids and this year of church school, and we ask that your hands be upon them this summer as they finish school, and let them realize that the best gift they can give Dad and to God is to just simply have a conversation. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Off you go. I got a garbage can for my truck for Father's Day. I'm, 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 I'm guessing. I'm guessing. I don't know about you, but like, what's the kids left? Like, we wrapping these presents? No, no, no. I just, just go. Uh, I begin today by telling you that I am a wee bit conflicted about today's sermon. That is to say, I am not sure if what I have to say to you this morning will actually rise to the level of a sermon, or if the words to follow will stubbornly remain within the realm of reflection or perhaps storytelling, which, if I'm being honest, is a constant dilemma for me. Moreover, it begs the question of what makes a sermon a sermon, right? Regardless of how each of you uh, chooses to meet it, be it in person or over the live stream or by reading the sermon that gets mailed out, 
My assumption is that all of you come to this moment in the week with a certain expectation that ultimate realities will be discussed and hopefully illuminated. While opinion, recollection, and amusement may be interesting or even informative, any sermon worth its salt must rise to a certain standard of spiritual relevance, right? Martha's back. That said, that said, speaking about ultimate realities week after week becomes taxing, if not tedious, for both the speaker and the listener. Not only that, but there are only so many ways of meeting such a challenge head on. Certainly one must instruct, but the more worthy goal is to invite inquiry such that it might lead to self-persuasion. Which, I would maintain, is why Jesus so often turns to the parable as a means of illumination, with today's scripture reading being an excellent example. Here in Matthew 4, we find Jesus speaking of seeds, mysteriously sown and grown, and the might of the diminutive mustard seed. While the kingdom of God sprouts and grows and the evidence is plain to see, it is hard to know just exactly how it happens, though Jesus seems to indicate it is the little things which matter, as a little goes a long way toward ensuring a bountiful harvest. Now today, of course, is Father's Day, the occasion each year when we pause to celebrate and honor our fathers, as well as those men in our lives who have been like fathers to us. Now, I have rarely met someone I would consider to be a good man who didn't have any number of fatherly men in his life to set an example and to provide both the encouragement and the counsel to support them on their journey to and through manhood. Now this morning, in imitation of Jesus, I would offer you three stories about fathers and fatherly figures, parables, if you will, in the hope that they might move you to self-persuasion about ultimate realities and, in so doing, hopefully meet the moment which a day such as this brings to us. Now, each of these stories unfolded this past week, and like all the stories I spin from the pulpit, are very much true. That they might also be spiritually telling, I must leave for you to decide. Now, apparently, some of the seniors at the local high school, those who are into cars, got together and decided, in their infinite wisdom, that on the last day of school, they would drive a different, that is, special car or vehicle. Though I do not know uh, the details of how this came to be, I heard through the church grapevine that Cameron, Cameron, who's a senior in the back there, our, our stream guy, wave up, Cameron, there it is, okay, that Cameron, a car fan himself, was eager to join in the fun and drive something other than the family's Toyota Camry sedan to school on the very last day of public instruction. It would seem that, having been made aware of Cameron's earnest desire, the car fairy granted his wish and came this past Tuesday, the last day of classes, and Cameron found himself driving to school in pretty much a brand new Toyota Tundra pickup truck. Ooh. Now, as you might well imagine, this created no small amount of delight in the heart of young Cameron. As can be clearly seen in the photographs, I subsequently received two of which I have included in the narrative sermon that gets emailed out to everyone. Now, not unlike the genie in the bottle, from whom you should be careful for what you wish, one would do well to watch with wariness for the whimsies of the car fairy, especially when the car fairy is Barry Walsh. 
No sooner had Barry dropped off his truck for Cameron Tuesday morning before school did he have the impish idea to find where Cameron had parked the truck in the student parking lot, use his spare key, and move the truck <laughs> to a different spot in the lot unbeknownst to Cameron. I mean, who possesses such a combination of chutzpah and hilarity <laughs> to even conjure up such an idea? However wily Barry the car fairy, may be all of us who know him are well aware that kindness is his truest color. And recognizing that poor Cameron's heart might very well just stop beating and fall out of his chest onto the pavement, were he to walk out of school and find Barry's truck missing, Barry rightly decided it's the thought that counts. While loaning one's truck to a young man so he can come to understand how cool and special we believe him to be is an admittedly small gesture. Small things lead to and up to big things, such as that young man coming to discover and believe in himself that he is every bit as cool and special as we know him to be. In today's scripture reading, Jesus seems to tell us that it is through such small means, moments, and acts of magnanimity that the kingdom of God is built and comes to fruition. Moreover, it is in these same small acts that fatherliness flourishes and is to be found as Barry and Master Sean and Jim Franklin and so many others here at the church have so adeptly and kindly shown to Cameron for many years now. My oh my, though, how those years have flown by, huh? As we know they always will. We are reminded that if we as a church want to matter later in big ways, we must start by mattering now in all the small things that we do. This past Wednesday morning, I was given a vivid reminder of just how much a lifetime of little things add up to at the end. I was called to the hospital to offer a prayer at the bedside of a man who after 90 some years of leading an exemplary life was mercifully being called home to God. Larry Aldis was an old timer from Brick Chapel. I came to know and greatly admire and deeply respect him during the 20 years I have led worship out there in the summer. While I was relieved that this would be a, a gentle death, I mourned the hole his absence has left in my own life and even more so in the lives of his wife and children and their families. Let me tell you, being with folks and their families at such a tender time is an extremely humbling experience as everything that truly matters is laid bare. As I finished the prayer and was saying farewell, the teary eyes of his wife and each of their three children told the tale of a devoted husband and loving father who brought so much to the world and his family in all the small things that he did. Our third and final story begins as I returned to the cottage from the hospital to rejoin Linda and our guest for lunch, John Getz, whom we had invited out that day to share a meal with us. Now, the term lunch might be a bit of a misnomer as it lasted for five hours. <laughs> Have you ever had a five-hour lunch? Now, if you know anything about John Getz, you realize this is well within the realm of possibility, if not probability. Not only is John an enthusiastic conversationalist, extravagant storyteller, and very quick-witted, John is also a very good listener. Add to that my own verbosity and Linda's talent for inviting dialogue, and you 
can correctly imagine that these were delightful hours which passed all too quickly. Longtime members of our church, John and his beloved wife Anne, moved to Florida well before I arrived. In recent years, though, we've become friends and it has been my privilege to support him as he lovingly and tenderly cared for Anne in the small ways to which he was limited as her body and mind declined. Suffice to say, the past few years have been difficult and trying for both of them, and I'm grateful for the mercy God has now bestowed upon them. John was up uh, last week to, for a graveside service for Anne, so we thought we'd have him up uh, for lunch. And as you can imagine, many stories were told and memories recollected and conversations had over the span of these five hours that Linda, John, and I shared together all of which strengthened the bonds between us and deepened our mutual esteem and fondness. We also had a lot of fun and shared more than a few belly laughs. Now, John is in his 80s, so he goes back a long way in Canton, where he and Anne raised their boys. Goes back a long way as soon as he can. He, was, uh, he taught there in the beginning, then he was in charge of facilities for many years, and uh, he was a member here of our church for many years. And, and as I would hear him talk, I was intrigued by the tales that he told of the same places that I knew, but in a different era, and to hear of people I now know, but as he knew them then. Now, during the span of our afternoon together, I was struck by the realization that so long as John draws breath, he is father to his children and husband to his wife. The role of abiding presence, I believe, is one to which dads are uniquely suited. Serving as an abiding presence is also one of the little things that we do as people of faith to mysteriously sow and grow the kingdom of God and to ensure its bountiful harvest. Now, I've shared these three stories with you today because too often we are like the person portrayed in the parable of the sower. As fathers and as a church, we sow seeds and watch them sprout and grow, but we're puzzled by how this happens. I myself certainly feel this way with regard to my own children and also to this church of ours. Really, though, there should be no mystery. When we sow mustard seeds of nurture, kindness, guidance, love, and abiding presence, we provide the modest means, moments, and acts of magnanimity upon which the kingdom of God is built and brought to fruition. We began today with the question, what makes a good sermon? What I have come to realize is that whatever spiritual relevance a sermon may have, it's less about what I say or what I write and much more about what you the listener or the reader do with it. Now, I've been around a while on the ground studying the field for a great many years. Please hear me when I say that all of you are doing so much and doing it well, each in your own way, in all the small things you do. Dads, as you go from here today or end the stream or finish reading the sermon, please know how much you have done and are doing in the lives of your children, all of which will be added unto them and you right up until the end and will see you through at the end. Moreover, all of us in this church should depart secure in the knowledge that all the things which seem so small now will loom large later, as they always have and always will, world without end. Amen. Amen. Our final hymn, or our middle hymn here, is 36, For the Fruit of All Creation. Would you please stand? You are very verbose today, young man. Good for you.
Please be seated. Time for a ritual of friendship. I'm going to ask Cameron to spin things around the camera. Hold on here. I was, uh, while I was preaching, I looked over and saw Anna, always attentive, and I realized that there are many different seeds that sprout and grow, and we do not know how, and I realize that you're marching towards your due date, so prayers for Anna and James. Also, am I rec recollecting correctly that the Trombleys have their due date fairly soon? Did anyone, did anyone know? No one knows. Okay. Oh, late June? Okay. All right. Well, keep us posted on that. Gonna have to sign into Facebook just to figure this out. I have one friend on Facebook. I'm not gonna tell you who it is. It would impugn their character. Oh my gosh, lots of people on the stream today. Linda, I'm thinking we're like, uh, oh, she's gone. Tell her 45. Okay, Sean, you got it? Okay, then acknowledge. Okay, you just had that look on your face like the happy Buddha. <laughs> we got a lot of great laughter in this church. All right, the Finleys are on the stream today. Betsy Robinson, I have your these days. I'll bring it by. Uh, Betsy was, uh, Betsy and Carolyn O'Connor were recipients of the flowers from last week's uh, service, and Barb Brown was kind enough not only to deliver them, but to spend some time speaking with each of them as she did get a, a picture of uh, Betsy with the flowers. She had a big grin on her face, so that was wonderful. Hey, Mark Brackett, look at you on the stream. And George, George, are you in Paris still or are you back home? He's been to Paris and Africa, back to Paris, and then back to Buffalo. Shuffling off to Buffalo. He's home? Okay. Chuck Lair, Chuck, I just realized that you had not been receiving the sermon by email, and I added you, so you'll be getting that this morning. Great to have you with us. Lou Shepard, hmm. the Sullivan family, hey, nice to see you, and Crystal Lyon are signed into the stream. Oftentimes, we all know that uh, the folks from PK are there gathered in the, uh, the chapel that is Donna, Pastor Donna's apartment, uh, so we're uh, glad that they're here. Lots of other folks apparently are on the stream, but they don't sign in, and that's fine, too. Let me just check my... Uh, all right, that's it. Anything else you care to be sharing? Mindful that Dave and Laura Gibson have an anniversary today, and uh, I don't know if you remember Conrad and Dorothy Shero. They're members of a church from long ago, are celebrating. Uh, do you want to hear a strange story? So Conrad and Dorothy were members here of the church, and for years and years, he, I think he worked at SLU, and then he moved long before I came. But it turns out that his son and I were, for, were fraternity brothers in college like 30 years ago. It was kind of a weird happenstance. Anything else? Yes, you want to come grab the microphone? Is it on? It is. So I would like to ask for prayers of comfort for my mother and my cousins, Abigail, Jesse, Elijah, and Ezekiel. Uh, my uncle Paul has passed away recently, and I'm sure that this is a particularly difficult Father's Day for them. Uh, my mother is certainly affected. He was the youngest of her family. Uh, and he just passed away recently at 65, with a brain issue, seizures. Uh, so, Prayers of comfort for my cousins and my mother. Thank you. You got it. Anything else we can be sharing? I am on vacation. Yes, we'll get there. Come on up, Martha. I am on vacation next week, and it's going to be 90 degrees, so that's a good thing. Chris will be here. Uh, prayers for my sister, Patty Jemison, who lives in Syracuse. Um, she just went to the ER last night and is hospitalized with pneumonia. That's your sister? Anything else? Yes, Judy. Can some Thank you. 
I'm praying for the kids and the teachers that they make through these last weeks. I mean, uh, poor Gwen back there. She just she can't she can't believe she's got to go back to school again next week, right? It's almost over, kiddo. Hang in there. Go ahead, Judy. Thanks. Prayers for my um, brother Bill. Official name is Harry. Uh, he's 83. He and his companion are moving from his companion's home, uh, which she'd occupied with her late husband and family for many years, into um, kind of a senior living apartment complex about an hour away. It's a big project, as probably you can imagine, having lived in their home for, or Brenny, his companion, having lived in their home for mega years. So I just uh, ask you a uh, prayers for, for my brother there. Bill is 83, and his companion is a little bit older than me, and so thank you. Thank you. Let you know that I'm aware that Barb King uh, had her surgery on Tuesday, and she's doing well. It's going to be a slow recovery for her. Barb? Uh, I just want to add um, prayers to um, the air conditioner in all the schools. The air conditioner. <laughs> it's going to be really bad this week, and it's rough Regents week. There are no air conditioners in schools, are there? Oh, are there? Yeah, there are. When I do weddings here, people come in like from the cities or something, and it's really hot, and, and I say, don't, and I see them sweating, I say, don't worry, we're going to turn the AC on in a couple minutes, and they go, oh, good. And then I grab one of the fans from the back, and I go, and I, ha and I hand it to them. So. Let us pray. Almighty God, we give you thanks this day for so many good things, particularly for our dads and uh, those in our lives that have been fatherly figures to us abided us and did all the small things so that we can come to understand how special we are. We give thanks uh, for this church and the way it supports uh, one another. We celebrate uh, at every occasion, but particularly today, uh, Emily Bolton being on the president's list, that's a big deal. Kate and, and, and Emily getting the permit, be with them as they learn to drive and, as, and their parents certainly. Thank you for bringing Martha back to us uh, after the winter. We pray for Nick's, the family of Nick's Uncle Paul, who has died. We pray for Anna and James Eller in their pregnancy and the Trombleys as they are winding down theirs. We pray for Martha's sister, Patty, and for Judy's brother, Bill. Uh, we celebrate the birthdays of Rich Grayson and Vern Aldis today and Karen Parker uh, this coming week. On Thursday and Lyles, we're also mindful of the anniversaries for the Gibsons and the Sharrows and the Ostranders. We ask that you be with us this day and we thank you for each person that has come into our lives and the way that they touch and change us and the way that we touch and change them. Gracious God, this day on Father's Day, we ask for fond memories and for healing of hurt. We ask for uh, love to be expressed, for words to be spoken, for prayers to be offered. And we ask these things in the name of your Son, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures here below. Praise God above the heavenly host. Creator Christ and Holy Ghost. Our final hymn is number 37, Let All Things Now Living. We're in the purple hymnal. Let all things now living, a song of thanksgiving to God our Creator, triumphantly reign. Who fashioned and made us, protected and stained us by. 
that tune just takes you by the hand and drags you right along, doesn't it? That's great. As you go from this place, be filled with peace and hope. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine on you, be gracious to you, and give you peace. Amen. Please be seated for the postlude. Thank you. 